administration is the practice of documenting your research plan and depositing it in a read-only public repository. You can go on and, and then um, do your research, write it up in a standard kind of manuscript, a, a standard research article, and, and submit it to a journal the traditional way. As well as pre-registration, there are also registered reports. They both allow you to set your analysis plans before you start, which is really important. Um, Pre-registration really tells you about the analysis you're going to do, but doesn't guarantee publication necessarily, whereas a registered report guarantees publication even if the findings are negative. With registered reports, we design the research, so we don't start it yet. We design it very carefully, and the journal sends it to a few other scientists, and they agree. Or maybe they say, can you add this other experiment? And we all agree. Me and my colleague and the peers and the journals say, yes, this is a sufficiently rigorous study. No matter what results you find, we'll publish it. And so that is entirely backwards to how it normally works. As a particularly an early career academic, I found that pre-registration does improve your research. I became more productive. The other thing as well is, is actually the feel-good factor that open science brings <laughs> it's a grueling business working in academia, it can be, or there's, there's ugly parts to it. But open science is what you want science to be. It, you know, it's rigour, it's really thinking through the question, and it's doing your best that you can do. Because it's new as well, there's so much scope to have your own fingerprint on where the field is going, but also to incorporate practices in, in your own way. We did something called a project pre-mortem, and so we all sat around a table and we sort of said, okay, our massive project to look at the neural basis of DLD has just failed. And we tried to think about what we would kind of think about as reasons for those failures. Um, so we were really honest and we said, like, perhaps we didn't recruit in enough people. And one thing that just came up is, like, perhaps we didn't find anything. Now, this is a really bad thing. Like, in, in science, finding something shouldn't be the reason you set out to do it. But equally, I mean, at the end of this really large project where we were going to be putting in lots of money, lots of time, careers of younger people at stake, um, that probably wasn't going to be ideal for us. So we thought about a registered report as one of the solutions to this because we could say, actually, we did everything in our power to do this well and we wanted to try and, and find differences in these specific areas and we have enough power to do so. So I guess part of that project pre-mortem kind of led to the registered report. One thing we found really useful about pre-registration is when we came to peer review of a paper, we had questions from the reviewers about whether or not we genuinely had an a priori hypothesis, and it was very easy to convince them we did. We could go back to our framework and show them our pre-registered analysis plans, and that made the process an awful lot easier. There are a number of issues with the current way scientific publishing works that I think registered reports can help alleviate or can address. Uh, one of them is the publication bias against negative results or, or things that are deemed to um, not be sexy enough for publication. Right now, if you look at all journal articles, so all published science, 99% of it finds an effect. So you say chocolate affects your lifespan. Bacon makes you die more quickly. You know, taking this drug works very well. We almost never publish, we're never allowed to publish studies that just say it didn't work. We tried these eight things, there was no difference. Um, we tried these drugs to prevent depression, it didn't prevent depression. Pre-registration is really useful um, to help publish all our results. So I work in the field of human brain stimulation where we try and take techniques from the lab into patients. And one of the problems with that is there's been a huge publication bias um, for positive results that have not translated into clinical gains. One of the things we can really improve on with pre-registered studies and registered reports is the agreement to publish the findings either way. And that's really important because actually it tells us what works, but really critically what doesn't work. So we don't waste weeks, months and years replicating work that just doesn't replicate. One of the things we show in, in our paper is that we weren't able to kind of find those results we registered. So the hypothesis that um, we put forward, the data that we caught didn't really support them.
So I think it's really important to publish null findings that brain activity for a very simple language task is exactly the same in, in children with language disorder as to those who aren't. That's a really interesting place to start and it gives us a foundation to build on so we shouldn't think that's uninteresting. It might not be as flashy as saying, well, we found the region of the brain that's different, but actually I think it's really solid to be able to say, okay, well, if that's okay, then what else might be different? So when we suggest pre-registering studies to our early career researchers, it can be quite a difficult conversation. I think there's a feeling that they've come into the lab and they want to get started with the experiments, and this obviously puts a delay to that. With good planning, I don't think it needs to, and I think it helps shape the experiments if we really think through the analysis before we start it. When you start a project, you've got so much enthusiasm to, to do it. It's really good then to bottle that energy and put it into writing up the protocol upfront thinking everything through because you've got that willingness and that motive to do that what people tend to do is they do the project and then they think about all the tricky stuff when they come to writing up where people are just exhausted they can't bear the sight of the project it's been absolute torture then at the end it's much quicker so i don't spend three years rewriting the paper sending it to a different journal taking criticism changing it again so i think the total time is about the same but the workload is very different one of the things we hear about a lot when talking about pre-registration is um, students in particular worrying that their ideas will be scooped. I think we worry about that probably much more than we need to. I think actually having a pre-registration does put a stamp on it as being your idea at a certain time. And if you're really worried about it, some of the um, pre-registration websites will allow you to keep your pre-registration private until the moment of publication. So actually you don't have to tell the world, you just have to say in advance for yourself. Not all types of research lend themselves equally well, but certainly all hypothesis-driven, all confirmatory and comparative analysis, in my mind, should be pre-registered. I think it's very clear and very important that we distinguish between hypothesis-led research and exploratory findings. I think they're equally important, but I think they are different things. And I think by um, pre-registering our results, it makes it very clear to everybody that you know, some of these findings are important and we thought they'd happen, some of these findings might be important, we weren't expecting them and they need following up. And there's absolutely room for serendipity and that's where the exciting science happens and that can still absolutely happen with pre-registration. It is a big culture change, so you might not get a lot of publicity because you did a study and found it didn't have any effect. So I think you need that support to prove it's better for science to work in this more rigorous way. So my main advice would be to find peers who agree with you that this is a better method, work together, and basically you have a job of convincing the higher ups, your boss, your boss's boss, that it's better to spend your time this way, it's better to do research this way. I think the current culture of science for rewarding very high impact publications that are, you know, quite often not replicable, isn't sustainable, and I think the funders are realising that. So I think we do need to move um, to a culture where we are open and transparent about what we're doing, but I think we need to do things to encourage people to do this as well. And increasingly, certainly at Oxford, there are um, awards and prizes for people who are really making strides in this. So I won a prize for my registered report from the British Psychological Society, which is really wonderful. Like, I, I don't think I would have won the prize if we hadn't bothered to put in that effort to kind of pre-register. So it's also really nice to see that the community is recognizing and like changing their ways. <laughs>